Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about how stressful is tenant turnover. Kirby, you've got way more experience with me than, or experience on this than I do. I uh, have experienced this a little bit, and especially now I'm buying my first duplex. I'm actually maybe seeing this uh, for real for the first time, having to rehab a unit and get somebody in there. But well, before I go on, before I go on, you go ahead. Speak with your experience because I know you've had hundreds of tenants. So, <laughs> so take um, no, let's let's keep it where you're at. I mean, it, it'll be better for you to say it. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, you're going through the process. Wait, you're going through the process now. Um, so usually, so just give a little backstory. Every property that Alex has bought, rental property that Alex bought before the deal is about to close. It has, it's been tenants already in there, or you already had a tenant that's going to be assigned in there day one clo at, at closing, correct? Right. Yeah. So this is going to be, this is the first property that he's buying where he is not in his local market where he lives. And it's actually a couple hours away. Let's just say that it's a couple hours away. And now he has to go through the whole process of turning the unit, acquiring tenants. And this is your first time doing all both of those, right? Turning the unit and acquiring tenants, right? Yeah. And now he's he's going through the actual operation of what it's like to be a real estate owner. So, Alex, you tell me, what's your level of stress from buying and already having a tenant in place to now? So, the actual work that we're going to have to do to get the tenant in there, I'm really not stressed about. I think the uh, the only stress I get, and it's not really stress, it's just like annoyance, is the process of just closing the deal. Because like, I just want to close. I just want to get everything done with. And then the process gets drawn out. And then, you know, th this was the first one where the owner or the seller was a bit of a pain in the ass. So this was this was interesting. This was a really interesting deal. I learned a lot from this. But as far as just the tenant turnover, the having a good crew that does work on your properties makes the whole lot of difference. Having the right contacts in place and knowing how everything is gonna fold out before you even do it, I think you know, eliminates that issue because stress really just comes from not being in control of the situation. So, you know, once you know that you are in control, I think it takes out the stress. And really a big thing with that too is, you know, even if you don't have the right team in place, I've had, you know, if I had to get a group together or find the right contacts, just having the money to be able to do that relieved my stress because I have the capital to just get the thing done. And so in this situation, I know that I'm in a good market. I know there's high rental demand in this market. And so getting a tenant won't be an issue. It's just a matter of getting, you know, turnkeying the property, getting it ready and I already know everything that needs to be done and we're already set in plan to, to get things done on the property and get it prepared. Right. So Alex, for, for people that's watching, Alex is ice cold me. So the first time I had a tenant turnover and you know what, let me, let me think of this. The first time I had a tenant turnover and like Alex, most of the properties I bought early on was owner occupied. I mean, not owner occupied. It was, Tenant occupied. The first time I had tenant turnover was, I want to make sure I'll get to that one second. So the first, so I, I bought a property, I bought a property and one of the tenants was paying way, well below market rate. And then, and for people that don't know, I, I use property management and stuff like that, but the one tenant was paying well below market rate. And then, you know, I tried, I talked to her right at closing and said, hey, you know, explain to her what the market rates was. I'm not trying to get her to market rate, but gradually over time, we will increase. And then I don't know if she had a sweetheart deal with the previous owners or what have you, but we raised the rent maybe $50. And in the area where the property is, 
annual raises is usually like, and this is before COVID, annual raises was still like $200 every year. But we only raised it $50. She she thought $50 was uh, way too much, way too much. And, um, and then so a month later, so she paid the rent for one month and then she said she was moving out, which is fine. But that was the first time I had a, a unit empty. And I was like, oh, God. What am I going to do? You know, because you know, my mindset is always I will not, I don't want to take family money to fund somebody else's living. And then at the time, the mortgage rate on the other unit, because it was a duplex, the rent for the other unit was just below what was needed to cover the mortgage. I mean, of course, minus the property management fees and all that. And then so now I'm like, oh man. Well, I have to dig in my pocket to cover it. And so what what ended up happening is, so I'm sitting there, I, I am stressed. I am stressed because I'm sitting there because now I got to depend on property management. And this is the first time I had to actually depend on them to actually do some work. Because usually it's just, oh yeah, you property manage, collect the rent, just send me, let me know when there's any issues. And Sure enough, I talked to the I talked to the property manager. I think I called her like three times that week. And then she was like, oh no, you know, we're gonna get the unit turned. She's she's been a we already been to the property, you know, she's been a good tenant. Only thing we're gonna have to do is, you know, paint this one room. Not that she messed it up, it was just humidity and stuff built up, you know, from the builders. The paint got old. So we turned that one room. I think it costs like uh six hundred bucks. That's back when things was cheap. But um, we turned that we turned that room or whatever, and then the the property manager said we'll have somebody in there before next month. And then sure enough, fourteen days later, there was somebody in there. But the stress level was still high. And then after that, the next time I had a turnover in tenants was when my fourplex burned down. When the tenant burned down the fourplex, and then that whole thing was crazy because I'm thinking. All right, this place just burned down. Thank God, thank God that I paid cash for the fourplex. Because if I had a mortgage on it, because I didn't, I've never been through a situation like this. So I didn't know about renter's insurance and the renter's insurance. I mean, not rent, renter's insurance, but when you get an insurance policy on a rental property, if some catastrophic happen, the insurance company will cover. Uh, the rents for the duration for the rehab. But it's not like it comes every month. They just they play it in three month blocks. So still, if I had a mortgage, I would have had to pay the money. Then I would have to pay the money and then got reimbursed uh, what have you. But yeah, so that was like a year long process. Well, you know, 10, 11 month process. Pro complex burned completely down, had to rebuild it. And then it was empty. And then at that time, I had a terrible property manager on that location. I end up having to let them go, but the process, but I'm still sitting there looking like, all right, stuff still, because, you know, you still got to pay insurance, taxes and all that with no, you know, real revenue coming in. And then it took me, it took me about three months after it got rebuilt to put people in there. And then finally, finally fast forward. And uh, this is why I brought this one up. The the last tenant that the bad, the bad property manager put in, they finally they finally moved out, but I had to evict them and I had to turn over a property just last month. And that was cost me like $6,000 to turn over that property. But now fast forward, more properties now is not as much anguish, but starting out, it's like, oh my God. Then they send you the bill to turn it over the property. You ready to pass out like man down. But yeah, Alex, Alex better than me. I was, I mean, of course I had the hard face on, but in the inside I'm like, Man, what the hell I just get into? But all in all, it all works out. But it's just, it's something when when you're going through something you haven't been through, you you be like, oh, you open your eyes. But again, to Alex's point, the fact that I had the money and I knew that, you know, I wasn't at risk of foreclosure. If I had to spend family money to make it happen, I was going to do it. But having the money, uh, and that's what made me start using more of understanding contacts, understanding uh, building relationships and things like that. And so it all worked out, but 
I was like, what the hell? I could I wasn't sleeping well during that time, especially early on. Now I'd be like, all right, go ahead. Evict if you have to tell just send me the bill. Yeah, I think I'm still in that like maybe that rookie phase where I'm still trying to just like get all the experience I can. And I mean, I just I, I and I have a good group that does work. So I'm not, you know, I'm not really worried about it. And I have the capital to turn it over. And this is just and the other but, thing is it's just one of the two units. If it was both units, I would be I would probably be more stressed out if it was both units, you know, because then I gotta right. looking at the whole mortgage payment, you know, being due and I gotta get both units occupied. But this is uh and I think maybe I'm just more so excited because it's my first duplex and I'm I'm seeing how I'm starting to acquire more and more properties. So really I'm just like looking to get it turned over, get it rented, move on to the next one, just like keep it going. Not I think maybe like in your situation, you already had the property and then someone leaves. Now that affects your operation. I'm, you know, I haven't even gotten it acquired yet. I just, I know that in order to get it running, I gotta, I gotta put work into it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and that was one thing when I first started off my first, my first two that I bought, I, I thought the tenants was going to move out because I thought they thought I was going to be such of a hard ass that they wasn't going to deal with me. But I actually, I still got those same tenants today. They, they're great tenants. Um, but I thought they was going to be gone. I was like, oh, they're going to leave. But I was like, how did this whole thing work? And me, I am i didn't have, you know, I wasn't, you know, at that time, I didn't look at YouTube for answers or nothing like that. I was just out there just on the wing in a prayer, just flapping in the wind. Just learning as a go, picking it up as a go. So yeah, it's interesting. But all in all, if the the key of that is build relationships, um, be well capitalized when you own and rental properties, just to relieve a lot of the stress. And once the stress is relieved, you can just operate at a better capacity. Having the stress, and then of course you still got to deal with your personal life. And then you got to deal with other tenants' personal lives and all that other crap if you don't have property management. So be well capitalized and build relationships. Get into circles with people that's actually doing it every day. You'll be fine. But if you think you're just going to go about it and you're not going to listen to nobody's advice and you're just going to do what you want to do, you're going to have a lot of headaches along the way. People that want to create their own blueprint, that's what happens to them. They have a lot of headaches on the way. But if you're doing something that's already been done, just follow the roadmap that's already out there and you'll be, it'll you know, alleviate a lot of the headaches that a lot of people have that just want to do it their own way. But with all that said, Alex, you got anything else? Nope. With all that said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below. If you're a landlord, let, let us know how you feel about turnovers, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.